Welcome to the Dad Challenge Podcast. My name's Josh. Thanks for joining me. Today we are going to be talking about the Dr. D Dozen, but not in a snarky way. I'm going to go back to a video that someone had interviewed Dr. D Dozen. I want to take a look at their earliest times on the channel. I've seen a lot of conversation around the fact that they had good intentions when they started and all these kind of things, but I'm going to actually look at it from a different perspective. I'm going to say that this was always her plan and she did this on purpose to get to where she was going to be because she saw something that worked. So let's talk about it. So if you know anything about Alicia Doherty, in my opinion, she has been trying to be famous forever. She has had the Yaya blog, I think it was called, way back before I think she even had kids. When they knew that they were going to get Alex in, they were very excited. They would vlog it. They would talk about it. And they would, she had a, 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 she had a, like a, an HTML blog, right? She would write about it. Then she joined MLMs and tried to make videos about MLMs. And then she tried everything in her power to get to where she was. And the only thing that worked for Alicia in the end, which is a lot of, this is a lot of reason why a lot of people hate her. And a lot of people call her out like myself is because the exploitation of the children that she brought into her home was the thing that gave her success. Hear it, hear it again. Exploiting adopted and fostered children is what gave her her success. And in the early videos, we can go back and look. She was unapologetic about how much she shared about her children. Now, we do have to give her a little bit of credit because today she doesn't do those videos anymore. Not that I've seen, because I think she realized how terrible it was. So part of me thinks that her intention was never to be a villain, okay? Because nobody wants to set out to be a villain. I don't think so. Some people do. There are people on the internet who want to be villains and they capitalize on the villain being villains. Um, but I don't think anybody, especially in the family vlog world, sets out to be a villain. They end up being the villain because when they find out the, how wrong it is what they're doing and then they continue to do it, that's when you become the villain. Okay, so if you know that you're doing something evil or immoral but don't care, what does that make you? And it's particularly true since I, did, I dropped a video yesterday about this whole idea of the dangers of kids with predators online. These parents really don't care about their children's safety. And when it's been brought to their attention that their children could be in danger or are in danger of other things like losing their privacy and their futures and all the future prospects because their entire life is online forever, they don't care, right? We've seen countless times where influencers and kids and teenagers are hurt by people that are looking for them. And, I, and again, I'll say it again. I don't think these people set out to be that, but it all changes once you, when you get, but it all changes once you get the information. When things, when, when your, when your initial idea is to do this thing and that's, and then it, and then all the information change, like as a good parent, you set out to do something and you, a lot of parents will pivot and shift based on their kids needs, wants, desires, you know, safety and everything else. But when you don't pivot away from the thing that's one of the most dangerous things you could do to your children, that to me makes it makes you with a bad person. And so with Alicia, I think it's particularly true because she did this interview with this guy. I let me find. It. I want to give him. A, I want to give him credit because it's not fair if he doesn't get the credit. It's a channel called uh, Todd Bangs. Now I've had a quick interaction with him in the comment section was very he's very respectful and everything else and uh we ended up just he just he said his piece i said my piece and we went our, our separate ways but i wanted to give him a shout out because he did this interview and i'll make sure he gets the credit for the interview but it's gonna be very i want you to see this i, I remember watching this way back i don't think i watched the whole thing but I, I like micah when i was covering micah going back to her early stuff was very eye-opening i don't think a lot of people are understanding the origin stories of these villains and so maybe that's something we gotta do. Where do they start and where are they now? So let's look at this. I am Alicia Doherty. And I am Josh Doherty. And currently we have seven children in the house. Children awaiting parents. Lift the weight. That's their old house, I guess. So they had seven kids in that tiny house there too. So again, I wanna reiterate too that Alicia and Josh were ill-prepared to do the thing that they're doing. And we now know that Alicia did skirt the rules and laws by doing what she did with the kinship placement because there's no reason for her to have 12 children in a home built for, let's say, maximum six people. Okay, I think it was a four-bedroom house converted. I think it has two and a half bathrooms, if if you're like if they work at all times. But they are ill-prepared but didn't care. That's another 
thing to put in the little folder to look at. Starting from the top. Yeah. We have <laughs> Alex, who's 10. James, who's 9. Uh, sorry, Zoe, who's I think they said something. I didn't hear it. Or Dash is two and a half. It's interesting to see Zoe and I think Bree is the not Bree. Zoe and the newest one that they have, they look identical as children. Jordan and Jace, who are our foster twins, are two, and then Bodie, who is three weeks. Yep, three weeks. Is she rocking a WWJD bracelet. Okay. Three weeks. We decided to adopt because we wanted children and uh, adoption from foster care seemed like the best fit for us with the hundred plus thousand children in foster care needing to be adopted and we just wanted a child so it was a good fit. With our oldest Alex um, we were one in 200 families in line to, to adopt him so we made it to the finalist round and then they chose us. Sounds like a game show. That's really weird to me that that's how this works. That we made it to the final round and we got like and then it was us. Like these, it's like people fighting over children. There's a video out there. I think I want to see if I have it here. But it, someone had sent me a video. It's on TikTok or it's on YouTube. There's an interview with these people who parade children in front of others like it's a freaking meat market. And these disposable children can be handed over to anyone. In fact, until you see it, it's difficult to believe. And we should warn you, it's quite confronting. Alicia. Alicia is a very special and very sweet young lady who is looking for her forever family. She describes herself It's a parade as like no other. Abandoned children desperately selling themselves to win over a new family, a new start. Travelling to this so-called matching event today is Tom. A teacher with no children, who is interested in 14-year-old Frank, given up by his adopted family two years ago and now living in a care home. Today is important because I get a chance to kind of be a part of something, you know, a part of a family that I've been waiting to be a part of for a very long time now. If something happens, then we'll pursue it, and if not, no, not a big deal, nothing gained, nothing lost. But Frank is anxious to make something happen. He has much to lose and only two hours to convince Tom he's worthy of adoption. Tom agrees to give his new son a trial run and will collect him in 15 days time. Thank you, do the same. But six months later, Tom decides they're not compatible. And again, Frank can only hope and wait to find a family who wants him forever. I don't know why it hit me so hard, but it hit me so hard. Imagine taking a child into your home saying this isn't a good fit. Right, Alicia has said that in text messages to Shauna. Says, if I can't exploit these children, this is not gonna be a good fit. What does that tell you, man? That is crazy to me. And so when you hear them talk about this stuff, that it's, it's like they're in a comp, and they are. And that to me is so inhuman. And it should never be that way. And the, this whole system needs to be overhauled. I know we say that about a lot of things, ex ex including the CPS system, including CPS and everything else. So many systems need to be overhauled because the government is so far behind. And the government just doesn't give a shit about kids. That's just the, that's just the long and short of it. The government doesn't care. And But so many people rely on the government and have no choice. So it's really telling. Before I was adopted, I feared that my family wouldn't be nice to me. Like my first one, my fears and my hope changed by being loved. My first family did like, they spanked me with spoons and they yelled at me a lot. I couldn't do anything about it. Our oldest had... So the reason I'm showing you that is because, you know, I don't think Alex has come out and he's probably close to a age where he could say, take that down. I don't want that on the internet, right? Um, and I hope Alex does speak up to a degree or he doesn't care. It's up to him when he becomes an adult. And I think he's very much close to being an adult right now. I think he's, al I think if he's, he's almost 18, right? So anyway, all that to say is that when you hear these types of things, when you hear this interview like this, this guy, obviously, who's this Todd person who's doing this interview is trying to, you know, 
probably has a good heart about this too. He's not trying to be like, I want to exploit these children for to grow my channel because his channel didn't grow. It's, you know, he doesn't have a massive growth. He likely did this out of the goodness of his heart to say, this is the, the reality of kids in foster care and I want to expose that. Right? And to a degree, that's where we all think that these people start. Like Alicia probably started by saying, convincing herself or, or honestly believing it, that I'm going to bring awareness to this because it needs to be, awareness needs to be brought to it. I need to, it's almost like the World Vision commercials where you see kids with flies in their eyes and distended stomachs and everything. It's, it's meant to invoke an emotion so you donate, right? A lot of these people have that intention. They're invoking emotion so that you'll be like, I want to now be a foster parent. And I want to be very clear. That is a good reason. Okay, I, I mean, to a degree, and I, I, I did message this one guy, so I think he's special kids with special books, and he his whole platform is built on connecting with special kids with special needs, and, and some of them are the craziest thing you've ever seen. You know, he makes his living doing that, and a lot of people are like, I called him early, but we had a great conversation. And to me, there is some benefit, and I've said this, even though those people who hate me for covering those women who exploited those children who were, who were, who were terminal online every day of their lives, even I said to the beginning, like, if you're going to expose it, that's great. Good for you. If you're raising money for a good cause, cool. I get that. If you're trying to bring awareness to something, I get that. But there's a fine line between awareness and exploitation, especially when it comes to children. And I think we can all, I think, I, I don't know who would disagree with that. I mean, I know who would disagree with the, the people who exploit the children because they're like, no, 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 I'm raising awareness. This is my, you know, my way of doing it. If I need to show my kid, you guys, how my special needs kids use the bathroom or all the meds that they're on or show them in their most vulnerable. Like there's this one lady whose child just died. Um, this kid was like living, it was insane. I it had to like, I don't know how to express it. She was absolutely grifting that her kid was terminal and everybody saw it. She was one of the most called out. I forget the name of it. Warnock Warriors, I think it was. Um, and it, and the child just died and it, it, the child became a meme. The child became something people made fun of. And then in the comment sections, all you'd see time and time and time and time again, like just have you ter have tried turning it off. And it's just gross. And this mother exposed this child, even though the child will never understand or see that, the world does. And that has an impact on everybody. So when I say that about this video, that this guy's honestly trying to bring awareness to something like that and using Alex's story for that, if it would have stopped right there and we would have known nothing else about Alex, I would have zero problem with that. Right? If it's just a kid he's interviewing, this family that doesn't go on to be famous and it, it evokes an emotion in you that says, hey, you know what? That has triggered something in my heart. I think I'm gonna foster kids because I could be a good parent. I think that is a net positive, but there's a but right? A huge butt. That's not where this stopped. We then went on to realize through Alicia's own videos and TikToks, every single thing that her children had wrong with them, every diagnosis they had, every pill they took, every, every bit of trauma they suffered as children, she exposed that on the internet for her own fame, for her, for, for money. Okay. And so that's why it's these, this video is really important. Because we're seeing something that could have been a net positive, could have been a good thing. She could have been the hero and the angel she always thought she was in her head. But then it all changed and she was aware of it. When it was made aware to her that she was becoming the villain, she doubled down on being the villain. And in my opinion, that's where her heart always was. It's not something that just changed. Money does change people, that's for sure, let's be real. But she's been pursuing this since day one in this, vi this video, although the conundrum of it is that it would have been fine on its own, is the start of her villainous origin story. Our oldest has fetal alcohol spectrum disorder. And there you go. Alex could have just said the thing he needed to say. Why do you need to know about his disorders? Why in the next phrase does Alicia need to sit here with Josh and her hair like that and tell you about his disorders? Like, if I was watching this video, I wouldn't have had to know any of that. I would have seen Alex's portion of this video and said, man, that breaks my heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to make a difference. I don't need to know anything else. But Alicia was so chronically oversharing of her children, she honestly thought that that was like good to do. And when confronted with it not being good, which was like, I'm telling you, a year and a half ago, she doubled down and did more. So one of the challenges is that he is socially, emotionally not where his chronological age is. And that can be difficult because they don't understand why. Are they saying this in front of him while he's sitting there? A 10 year old is acting like a four or five year old. And this is something that also pisses me off because we now know Alex 
if you watch the show a little bit, and from what I've seen, from what little I've seen, Alex turned out to be completely normal. Obviously, he's going to have some trauma from his childhood like a lot of us who are abused do. Okay? I, when I heard him talk about being beaten with a spoon and yelled at, that triggers me because that was my childhood too. Okay? To a degree, it was, I don't know how worse it was. I don't want to know. And, you know, if I, but as an adult, I can tell you my story. That's my prerogative. But he was made to tell his story to strangers online when he was nine. But from what we see now, Alex is completely normal. Well-adjusted, young teenage boy. Doesn't seem, he seems very responsible to a degree, to, you know, most teenagers too. He takes care of his brothers and sisters, very protective of them. He's a normal guy, tries to be funny. I don't think he's delayed in any way. Doesn't seem like that to me anyway. And so when she says all these things preemptively, this is expected of him for his whole life. And if that's been told to him in his ears all his life, that shit sits with you as a kid. And because my mom was unapologetic about saying shit she needed to say in front of everybody because she just didn't care. She was unapologetically honest about things. For example, my mom told me I was an alcoholic. Your dad's an alcoholic, so that makes you an alcoholic. And so often it would be when she's drinking and drunk, she would tell me this. Not to say, you know, not to be like nice about it, but to be like, you're just as bad as your biological father, which I, who I didn't fucking even know. I was told my whole life I was an alcoholic because my parents were alcoholics. Like I was told my, if you're told your whole life something, you start believing it. If you're telling this kid while he's sitting there listening to an interview that he has FASD, that he has all these, he's, he's not developmentally, he's not developmentally there and all this kind of stuff. He's going to believe that shit's going to sit with him. And Alicia will often tell you the shits why these kids are sitting in the frame with you. So that's got to mean something. Say, I miss you. And she says, I love you. And it makes me really feel really good. I want to parse that out a little bit. It's very telling because even from the young age, the things that the things that stuck out to him the most at nine years old is that he gets things, balloons and everything else. But it's also very telling. He's like, well, she also hugs me and loves me. And that's great. But we don't see that anymore. Alicia does, and Josh both, from what we see, and they show us a lot, okay? They absolutely have their favorites, 100%. Like, we know that James is not a favorite in this family. We know that um, Patrick is not a favorite in this family. You know, we see we see that Brie, I think it's is it Brie, I think it's the youngest one's Brie, is like the absolute favorite. Alex is the is the first born into the family, for lack of a better term. So firstborns always have that special place in people's hearts because they couldn't have children. And she vlogged about Anyaya stuff or whatever it was called, about how this was like the miracle. She was so happy. Alex was their miracle. That Alex was the fulfillment of their dreams. And so he's always gonna be the gem, the jewel in that situation for them. As they grew and as everything else started happening, she had less and less time to do that same thing for them because she physically, physically, emotionally, and mentally cannot be stretched to that degree to give the same amount of attention to each of her children. And we can see this so evidently in the content because they show it to us. Also, we have many people who have been connected to the family who have reached out to me and have said they just... They are nothing like they even appear. So even the thing that they do show us on camera, the love that they show us that they have, from people's mouths who have been in their home, who have been with them, all said, that's even fake. So it's the person who says, I don't think they're getting enough love from what I see. Imagine how little they're getting when the camera's turned off, when Alicia's chronically online looking for my haters and joining up with them and saying, Josh is an a-hole. But I'm telling you, she doesn't have time enough to parent 12 children. And the time that she does have away from the camera is spent online editing and creating more content. That's it. That's all she does. She's chronically creating content. And everything that she does is curated to the people who want to watch it. Because people will say, hey, can I have a house tour? And then she'll give you a house tour. So, hey, can we get a roll call for this? She'll do that. She's catering to an audience and her children have to be the clowns, have to be the zoo animals for the people who are paying for to watch that content. And that is exactly what happened. But I don't think she realized that from this point. It got away from her. The money became too hard to pass up. That's what I think. The most challenging part has been getting them to trust us that we will not abandon them and that they are staying here forever. Hmm. That's interesting that you said that. Considering that you said this. Now, this is a text message that was released um, and it can't be corroborated, but it's been going around. I was hesitant to say it. So I'm going to say, take it with a grain of salt, unless it can be corroborated. And I think if Alicia came out and said, that's not true, it would force the person that released it to say it is true. And here's more proof. That's why I think Alicia's silent on it, but basically saying, you know, Josh would have to change his heart on everything. 
because he doesn't he didn't want this and Josh didn't want it. We can tell him now Josh doesn't want it. Josh, from what we see again and what we've heard from people who have been around them, Josh is a checked out parent. He doesn't do anything. Alicia does absolutely everything and she does it terribly because she has no support. Also, she just doesn't care and she's doing it for content. So she's just putting the least amount of effort in. That's why these kids don't get hot meals ever. They never have a hot breakfast. She's made that shit by 5.30 in the morning. They're not up for another hour and a half. It's cold as ice, right? She's throwing Easter eggs on the ground. She's not hiding anything. She does the least amount possible and wants to be celebrated as someone who does a lot. Now, the a lot that she does is that she allows these kids to come to her house and they, you know, she brought these kids in in a loving home. She buys them a whole ton of shit and she does everything she thinks she needs to be doing. But the thing that she really needs to be giving them, the love and the attention that they crave and desire, she does not give them. And I've said that from day one. And that's one of the things that hits me really hard because I, I grew up the same way. I didn't have a parent who gave me love or attention. I was abandoned from the young age. I was abandoned to the point that my mom got remarried when I was eight and then there was a normal life until I was 12. Okay, between eight and 12, we had a normal life. It was the best four years of my life as my childhood, even though I didn't know what was going on in the background. Then it all kind of changed in the last year and then sh shifted. And then when my mom got divorced and went off the rails and did it, what she wanted to do, the drugs and the biker gangs and everything else, okay? I was completely abandoned from the age of 13 until I moved out from six to 16. That's why I'm so unapologetically outspoken about these types of people because that really does have an impact on these kids. And she wants to sit there and tell you that she's so good and the kids are having it so good. But people like me who know intimately what they're going through, know that that's not true. And not leaving to move again. That's been the hardest part. Okay. Our next that we adopted, James. Um, he was in a day treatment program for his emotional issues and we both felt like we had the tools to be yeah. able to um, to help this child and and to make his life better huh. we see how that turned out the thing about James I see I see a lot of myself in James that's why it hits me so hard so I probably have a bigger heart for James than everybody else in this family is that he's bullied but doesn't maybe see it you can tell james is the sweetheart of the family because the dogs trust him the most that's i'm not even kidding you so he's a gentle giant and everything else and that's kind of like i see that but we also see how he's actually treated by the by alex for example right by the other kids by the parents someone had pointed this out because i missed it in the easter hunt he had picked up two golden eggs and the was like you stop finding golden eggs now but then zoe comes over i found three. Oh, that's nice sweetie look for the gold ones i find gold one i find gold one too. Okay, now leave the rest of the gold ones for other people. You have three golden ones? Oh my gosh. Right? We see it. And I don't, it, it's so crazy to me because Alicia doesn't. Alicia doesn't grasp the fact that her and Josh treat kids differently. But when people are seeing from the outside in, when you become a fishbowl, that all gets exposed and they don't see it. And that should be even scarier to everybody that they don't see that. Because that means that they're aloof to it, that they don't, they don't even understand that they're doing it. So how can they fix it? Right? So we know, we get to watch this video with our hindsight being 2020, which is great. They don't get to make this video with that though. And so we see this and we see how far they've come and we see how far they've fallen. And that is a big deal when we talk about child exploitation. That is something that should never be ignored. That's something we should always continue to talk about. That is the danger of this industry. We really were the perfect family for him. Yeah. I was six or seven when I was adopted. Before I was adopted, I felt that I wasn't part of the fa the Dockery family, but now I really feel that I'm part of the Dockery family. I feel like that this is my favorite family. Did he, now he just said, when I first got here, I didn't feel like I was part of the family, but now I feel like part of the that, that unapologetic, that, that honesty there is something we should not overlook. And what does it mean? But they obviously don't, they're not going to expand on that. Not a single thought in my mind ever told me that I would have seven children. We ever. had, we just adopted one. So if he's saying that now, if he's saying, look, I can't believe we have seven kids. Oh my God. Now, never in my wildest dreams or my desires did I think I was going to have seven kids. And he, he knows, he's saying that on purpose, right? He's like, but we're doing it. Now they have 12 kids. So what does that tell you? He already wasn't. Again, that makes more that makes more sense to this screenshot of this conversation where she's like, we don't want more. And I'm pretty sure that screenshot was taken before they brought two more in. And the conversation that she keeps having is like, look, our channel's dying. 
we need to bring more kids in. And I don't think Josh is for it. I don't think Josh really cares. Like, he's like, look, we got enough money now. I make a decent... Josh makes a decent amount of money that they could support this family. I mean, they wouldn't make... They wouldn't be able to do $5,000 a month grocery hauls and shit like that. But he makes over $100,000 a year. That's not nothing, okay? That's a lot of money. But not a lot of money for 12 kids. Alicia could go get a real job. She could do that too, right? So they could get by without this exorbitant amount of money. But Alicia wants to continue to do this because she knows that what's makes... And every family, no family vlogger I've ever heard will ever talk about this out in the open. Will ever tell you the truth about why they do this. Why they get pregnant so many times. Why they will adopt. Why they will expose all this stuff. They know, like Matt and Abby are a perfect example of this. And I think, and the other ones... The adoption people and the other, they're, I think the Beasons are pregnant now. They are so excited when they get pregnant or when they have this new life change because the content gets so dry that when this new content comes in and it cannot be denied, go look at any family vlogger, look at their top videos. All I'm saying 100% of every family vlogger you can think of, and you sort by popular in their channel, it has something to do with pregnancy, birth, and children. Always. Okay? Always. And so when they get pregnant or they're ready to adopt and do this stuff and they're ready to exploit that online, they know it's paychecks. It is paychecks on paychecks. That's all they care about. Now, some of them might want big families and that's just a bonus to having the big families getting a big ass paycheck too. But it cannot be denied that a lot of these people do this and do the same shitty content over and over for every single pregnancy because it is a formula that has worked for them. It is an, it is an algorithm boost that they know works for them. Matt and Abby are a good example of this. They do this stupid, dumb thing with her belly where they release the air and she pushes that shit right in. And that's, I'm not even sure that's safe, but they do it because an algorithm hit for them, right? They released four of the same video, TikToks, shorts, and YouTube video about her discovering she's pregnant by accident with the camera on. That was an algorithm that was something that hit for them. They made millions of dollars on it. And so they're going to continue to do that. Every single family vlogger in the past 10 years, at least one of their children being born, they did that stupid song okay they do the same thing what's in my bag you know scared about pregnancy and then they'll open up their effing legs on youtube and birth a ch child which we've s since discovered if you're following the laws of child actors and everything else that's illegal you're not supposed to kids are not supposed to be in content until fi i think 15 days after the birth that's like the that bare minimum the government asked for. And none of them have adhered to that. And so that's got to mean something. I don't know where I was going with all that. But it comes back to the fact that Josh did not want this. But Alicia likely is pushing for more. Because what else are they going to do? They're not going to bring any more kids in. I don't think even the agencies will give them more kids. If the agency, after discovering everything that we've discovered on this channel and how fake and gross they are, give them more children, I have lost all confidence and faith in adoption and um, fostering agencies. All confidence. One, and we said, I think we're good with one child. <laughs> there it is. There's the old laugh, not in the eyes, laugh. <laughs> yeah. That hasn't changed. That's six years. Oh, Karen's here. Hey, Karen. Go, we had no kids. So now we have seven. And, and then it didn't almost go through. And kids are just literally bawling their eyes on the back. Ah, shut up. I'm interviewing about how good I am. Shut up. We call children away to parents to help advocate for us. And the next second, they were on the phone with the caseworkers and getting everything sorted out so that we could adopt our son. When we talk to people who are on the fence about fostering or adoption, we always say it is hard, but it is worth it. And make sure that you're committed time-wise to um, raising a child. Are you shitting me right now? Did you just say that, Turkey Burner? Did you just say that? <laughs> it's giving. Oh. Right? Look at this one. <laughs> the guy's like, it's all friends. I'm like, I think you burnt these shits, bro. <laughs> Make sure you're, this guy doesn't believe a word's coming out of his mouth right now. He is a zombie in this video. And it's pissing me off because Josh obviously doesn't have a, as a big a role as, as Alicia, but he's just as bad. You know, he doesn't get off scot-free. This guy's trying to say some shit. 
forced to do this interview likely about like make sure you have time and energy to do this you don't have time and energy for your children now josh every time you're on camera you're either swearing at your kids or swearing at alicia or you're on your phone okay we are barely involved in your children's lives he does work full time so you can't give him that he you got to give him that he does work full time he probably does a lot of extracurricular activities with school students at school so if you have that type of lifestyle where you can't invest in your children like he just said you should be doing maybe you should adopt the 12 kids eh? just a thought Right? So he's sitting here saying the thing because he wants to be virtuous and look how awesome we are. And then we, again, our hindsight is 2020, which is good for us, bad for them. But now we see that he is not invested in his children. Even when it comes to all the holidays and shit that we watch, he's just on the couch watching football. Even when he burned the shit out of the turkeys, he didn't want kids around him when he's doing that. This guy was not prepared for this, did not want it. And it was sucked into it because Alicia wanted it. Right? Happy wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy life. Then when the millions started rolling in, I guess, you know, he gets his new truck and it's a little hard to say no to all that stuff. So Josh is as complicit in this, if not worse, because he had a say, but decided to go with the money way more. And again, I almost think that Alicia had better, had be had a better heart about this at the beginning. He just didn't want it at all. So that's really telling. And to having a family. We always say, time again, our goal for all of our children adopted biological foster is that they are happy and healthy. Healthy, eh? That's interesting. Happy, maybe. Maybe not even that, to be honest with you, because I've seen kids. Just buying kids a bunch of bullshit and Nikes and everything else does not make a kid happy. It makes them, you know, it gives them a temporary boost in dopamine, and it's not really good for coping, but maybe a happy degree, they might say they're happy. But I think as these kids get older, I think especially James, we've seen Nevaeh, Deshaun, Zoe, because the kids, the oldest kids are the ones who seem the most unhappy. That's got to tell you something. They're growing up in a place where they're actually not getting a proper childhood. They are being exposed online for one, right? All their vacations and all the things that they do for fun are dictated by what the fans want to watch. Okay, they are forced to do videos, as we've seen many times through all the roll calls and everything else. They are always just on the run. And when they ever do, whenever they do something, it's so half-assed put together that everybody's always in chaos because she always does the bare minimum. So it's interesting to see the oldest kids who are the ones who look the least happy in the family. That's, don't overlook that, okay? Just make sure you don't. And we'll do whatever it takes to get them to that point. You know, she said healthy, and I was alluding to the fact, I too, that they don't eat anything that's healthy, ever. So how much did McDonald's cost for my 12 kids for 24 hours? And I know that we all struggle, but I think a lot of us are better than this. From what we've seen, this is the most atrocious diet I've ever seen anybody. And I'm not just saying that to be like, make myself feel better, but I do feel better <laughs> about my own parenting and what I feed my children after watching what she feeds your children. I think a lot of people do. Maybe that's why a lot of people watch this because they want to feel good about themselves or they, or they want to like make sure that, oh, I do that same thing. So it must be okay. Right. They're not feeling, they're feeling good because someone else does the same shit or they're feeling good because like, oh man, I'm not that bad. It's one of the two as far as I'm concerned. And so that's really telling. She does not feed her kids anything healthy. I yet seen that. I don't know if she d does vitamins. I she didn't talk about it, which is good. But we've seen that. So you want to live a healthy lifestyle, then you really, really need to step up and do that. And she doesn't. And we have proof because every week she spends thousands of dollars on just straight garbage and then orders more garbage like fast food every day. <laughs> Some kids are not so sure they want to be adopted, but after you make them feel welcome, they want to be adopted and be this in this family forever. Sitting there <laughs> playing a board game, they've never done that before. What's the scar do? <laughs> Again, making a video like this, I get what they're doing, and they're like, let's pretend to do this. It's all pretend, right? And so there's the video, that video, and then there's this part two to this. I guess he actually sits down with Alicia. I don't know how long it is. Beautifully sunny, 75, 76 degrees. She's not even listening because if you're going to do an interview with somebody, get a babysitter or get Josh to do some parenting. How about that? Yeah. In sunny North Carolina. Uh, how rude. I know she's like, she wants to be like, but I'm the everyday mom and I have to do this. Like if you're going to give somebody your time, give them your time. Give them your undivided attention because it makes you look gross and rude. Next. But next month, we're going to be in upstate New York, and we're coming to see you. I'm so excited. Yes. You look excited. Too long. Yeah, it's been, it's been 
four, what, four and a half years? Five? Yeah. Years? Four years, yeah. Yeah. She doesn't, does anybody else realize she doesn't want to be doing this interview right now? That's just me. So, 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 so when Dash was just being held, now he's <laughs> dashing. He's heavy. Yeah. Yeah. They were babies. <laughs> yeah. And yes, now babies. they're not. Right. Right. And, and, and your twins, we had to film the back of their heads. Right. Oh my gosh. Were, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Because they weren't they were adopted still, yet and you can't show kids in foster care. There you go. But they still show them. I don't care if you show the back of that. You still showed them. On social. And you still talked about them. So I know you're not allowed to show them their faces, but you also shouldn't be allowed to talk about them. They should not exist online in any capacity. The media. Yeah. Right. You yeah. can show their beautiful faces now. Right. Yeah. I was so excited to see them. I was like, oh, yes. Yes. They're in their forever home. They yeah. can turn around and take pictures. It was, it was just a beautiful sight. And then yeah, that's all that matters, right? Now you can take share them on social media. That's great. This is the benchmark that a lot of these people who expose children online from adoptions, they like, oh, like crazy pieces, crazy middles did this. They would often blur the kids out and then they would just put them in sunglasses. And then when they were not allowed, it's like, yay, you can be on video now. It was like a benchmark for them. That's all that mattered. That's and that to me, that's gross. And over the time, I'm like, why isn't this being picked up? Like, you guys, you, you got to be kidding me. Like, this yeah. family is amazing. You guys are amazing. Oh, You're sick. We were getting picked up. Picked up by who? What's he saying? Yeah. And everything is like, even when I was there, you know, even in the video. We, and they, yeah. Mom! Stuff is I think what he's saying here is that I can't believe he got picked up because I know that a lot of people have... I think even Alicia said this, that she was trying her hardest to get a show like TLC to do the documentary. I'm like, hey, let's get you on TV, but... Like, could you imagine these people on a TLC? So they're not, again, there's not enough drama, first of all. Um, and I, I think that producers came in and saw who they were and were like, so hear that. Even if a show, even if a channel like TLC is one of the most disgusting, trashy networks in the world who have exploited children forever so, so many times, even they said no to them. I think that I think to this day that haunts Alicia. She's really pissed about that. She can't understand why it never worked out and is just angry about it all. It also should make you pause to think, did she do all this? Did she bring more kids in more, 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 more because she was vying for a television show? Interesting. Happened and it was just like, you know, it was, it was like I realized, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, so tell me briefly, we don't want to give them too much because mm -hmm. um, because coming in the coming week. We will be working on part two. Yeah. And I want to point out part two, unless he deleted it, never happened. I, I can't see it on his channel. So and we moved into a new house. Since you moved into a new house. I was yeah. going to ask you about that. So they knew they had 12 kids. Moved from a smaller house to a house that still wasn't the size big enough for 12 kids. So they knew that. Damn. Why are agencies giving people, giving so many children to people who don't have facilities that can support them? I guess they. I guess what they see is that well, it's better than the alternative, which I guess I have to agree, right? They're like, well, you don't have any options. Who can do this? I almost feel like sometimes adoption and fostering agencies are just they have these sp specific groups or sibling groups or kids that are hard to adopt for whatever reason, and they, you know, it's on them to just find anybody who will take them, and that really sucks for those kids. Because I'm sure there are people, and I'm not sure if it's because it's related to being that you have to be in the same state or whatever the case may be, but maybe, again, the overhaul that needs to happen needs to be put in place where it's like, okay, well, we're not just doing this and it's it's the bare minimum, which is exactly what happened with Dr. Dozen. They are the bare minimum of what these children need, which is a roof over the head, food, that's it, that's, and that's all they, and that's, we see the bare minimum and are told by people, again, in their life, say they don't even give them that. You know, what we see that anything above the bare minimum, they don't give him. And she wants to tell you that, no, they're amazing. They get loved. Again, buying a kid a pair of Nikes is not what they need when they need therapy. Okay, yeah. So you must be busting through the seams of the house, but you actually moved into a new house. Oh, yeah. You saw our old house. Yeah. Yeah. We, yeah. No it way. was a great no house, way. but we yeah. were definitely too big for that house anymore. Yeah. You're also too big for this house. Yeah. Has been like the talk of the town tell me a little I bit know. More about the talk of what town the town robocop came from what do you mean detroit what do you, her kill you're cooking kill people so maybe it's a talk of chicago or something 
You guys hear what's going on in Chicago, by the way? Holy shit. Do yourself a favor. Head over to Twitter. Type in Chicago. There's like hundreds and hundreds of teenagers roaming the streets, beating people up, shooting people, and looting stores. It is crazy what's going on in Chicago. So I just wanted to point that out. Chicago. I have been to Chicago. It's kind of nice downtown, but don't go to Chicago. But the talk of the town, and again, I think what he's saying is that you're going a little bit viral from what you're making, but she doesn't cook well. I think it's the volume of it, like prepping breakfast for 12 kids and all this, because people are like, well, how do you do that? And then they look at her and like, oh, it's gross. You're gross. And then we realize as we watch further and further that they just eat cereal because there's no way they're eating the shit that she's cooking. Uh, it's... <laughs> That's, That's a lot of what goes viral on our pages is just the meal prep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for me, this is that she's speaking now in viral terms. See, a lot of that goes viral is this, that and the other thing. That's all she cares about. What's going viral? There you go. If you're ever wondering where her heart has shifted from the first interview we saw to where she is now, that's where it shifted. What's going to go viral? Just my everyday life. What um, I'm making, it's no, like, it doesn't even phase me to make three dozen eggs for breakfast. But <laughs> then I realize... Eggs. There's no reason to make three dozen eggs either. Do your little kids need three eggs? Okay, I, I'm an adult and I eat maybe two. I usually have one piece of toast and one egg and I'm good. So you don't need to, she does it and then she throws it in the garbage. Wow. So yeah, they, they, they like... <laughs> I am I am active back there. So what if Yeah. I'm doing an interview. So where is everybody? Go somewhere. Some Do it when they're in school. What are some of the challenges? Like just like, you know, I, I know I know it's a lot I, I know it's a lot to deal with. You yeah. know, but not in the sense of, you know, you have some people like, oh these kids. And I know that's not your posture. Sorry, the kids are sliding. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> Does she mute that shit because kids are swearing? <laughs> then you're just going to be overwhelmed and negative. So I really try and spin a lot of our challenges and focus on them at... As usual, people are smashing shit with a hammer in the house! And she doesn't care. These... <laughs> These kids are not, and I'm not saying you should be yelling at your kids, don't do that, but at the same time, you should be like, teach your kids how to respect people's time and respect people in general. These kids... As much as it's not their fault, because it isn't. They respect nobody. Because she doesn't demand respect. She doesn't teach her children how to behave in public. Okay, my kids would never do something like this. My kids would never act out in public either. Okay, I'm not a guy who's like, and I wouldn't yell at my kids, but my kids just aren't like that. They just are respectful of each other. It's weird. Maybe I'm just lucky. Okay, maybe. It, it, it's really telling, because she just... I've said this before, and it was the Christmas one that really opened my eyes, where she, everybody's having this fun opening, and she's just sitting there with the camera on her like this, and she doesn't care. There's no engagement whatsoever. I'll, and kids will say something to her, and it goes one ear at the other. She doesn't even hear what they're saying. Yeah, that's nice, and she says that. She is not an engaged parent, and therefore doesn't really care what her kids do, because she's learned to block out the noise, learned to block out everything that's going on, and doesn't care. And these kids are going to be that their whole lives because they don't understand. They will not succeed in school or jobs because they do not understand it. They don't understand how not to inv how not to be this this way. Because Alicia has just been like, yeah, do what you gotta do, free range. There is something to be said for allowing your kids to explore and do what they want to do and have fun and everything. I'm that guy. But there are things I let my kids do. My wife would never, right? But at the same time, there are kids. There are things that I'm like, okay, it's time. That's that's a no. Alicia doesn't care what her kids do ever or what they're doing at all at any time. All she cares about is her content and herself and her image of herself being an angel. Like opportunities. Um, like I get to fold laundry for 12 people. Like I yeah. get to get to we're able to do that stuff. I just, I look at so many things as a blessing. Bodie. Sorry. <sighs> Um, but the challenges, challenges I would say are managing Oh, yeah. oh Sammy came for a visit He's such a good boy You're a good boy Sammy He likes to rub on the beard Good boy Good boy <laughs> so, 
as far as your vehicles can. I gave you. So can I get bit get? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Okay. The block. She's not even paying. This is so. This is so nuts. You're so rude, Alicia. This guy's just trying to interview you and expose your story, whatever. And you're ignoring him while someone's trying to. And you're like, I'm. I'd be like, look, guys, don't talk to me. If you need something, go see your dad. Go see your older brother. There's like four kids in here who can help you do it. Get lost. I don't even respect her for saying it, guys. I love y'all. Piss off. All right, I'm here. I'm trying to give my attention to somebody who deserves it because I said I would give him my time, and I'm and she looks like an asshole right now because she is an asshole. Mm, yeah, just that one over there. Oh, uh, no. I, I'm, ew. One, that's James. James. This guy's trying to be a nice guy, but I'd be like, well, that's been nice. I'll see you later then. James. What a disrespectful piece of garbage. James. My kids are in drum lessons right now as we speak. I, said, I hear it. I hear it. <laughs> Wait, but I, I heard a deep voice come in. Where, 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 where was that? That's the drum before? teacher. That's the drum teacher. Yeah. So you're like, yeah, let's, let's just interview uh, teachers here. Teach my kids drums. Yes. The okay. more people we can have, but we've just grown so much in how we take on life um and now trying to turn around and encourage others to take on life stupid the people that have talked to me in the back end i know more about it because they've said the things to me and i can't say them to you because i can't out the people who they are but alicia has been chronically online for the past two and a half years and it's been her obsession to be the number one in this industry. And she has even said that. And she even will throw other people under the bus and start beef with other people and start and send fans after other people because she's always trying to be that number one if you crossed her. It's like a Tiffany, it's like a Tiffany Raquel Smith case. Right? Very much like that. With positivity and good vibes only. Good vibes only. Kiss my good vibes. Right in its ass cheek. Mm -hmm. Good vibes only. Are you serious right now? Good vibes only. Have you ever met your husband? These look like he's having good vibes. What, you're recording? Fucking tell me that. I'm recording. Thanks. And yeah, we've just, we've come a long way in four and a half years. Yeah. We've grown as a whole, as individuals and a whole. Yeah. Wow, thanks for no answer. Appreciate it. That's, that's, that's so special, man. That okay, I take it back. She's not as smart as everybody as I thought she was. All right, so... I can't even finish watching the interview because it's so badly done. Oh, I'm sorry. I need to go. What Sammy wants, Sammy gets. Okay. So anyway, the interview is so bad. I can't even finish watching it. But I, I, I'm actually glad I started doing this, going back to the old videos and started realizing it. That was very eye-opening because you see this guy do an interview and then like I think four years later, she's there with her eyeliner and she's completely changed. Her demeanor has changed. She thinks she's a baller. Even like every aspect of her energy has changed from the old to the new. She was humble before because her humble beginnings were like, I just want to be a happy meow and love these children. And maybe she's right. Maybe she did. But then you see the second half. And then you see four years later about who she is and how she's like about algorithm and how she cares about this and views and viral. What's this and that. She completely changed. Money does change people. Fame changes people. They feel like they're untouchable or they feel like they're entitled. That is one thing. If you see any influencer, no matter if they're family vlogger or not, they always start out some way. And people have said this about me as well, which I don't know if I see it or not, but maybe. I don't know. I'm not rich. I have gained a little bit of a following, but I, th what they'll say is that you've changed since the beginning. I used to like you, blah, blah, blah. I love Meg. There's a video I'm going to do soon about her because I used to cover her and she's done. So piss off, love Meg. But hers was the story of this woman who lived in a trailer and she was cute and funny and did all these things and people liked that she was relatable. Then she moved on and became this totally unrelatable character because she evolved and then deleted all the old shit about her old life because she didn't want you to see that, Right. There is something to be said for people like Jenny, you know, Jenny, I know I'm still know who I am. I'm, I'm Jenny from the block, right? I remember where I came from. There's something to be said about your roots and understanding what you started as on YouTube and where you finish as. What do you think? I, I think a lot of people who fall, I mean, I've grown to a degree to a point where I, and I will never, ever forget where I came from. Even if I do pivot away from this conversation, um, I'll never pivot away from, from the exploitation of children completely. But I know that I do have to create a pivot on this channel because this, this topic of conversation, it is in its like peak right now. And that's good because that means all the laws are going to change. All the conversation is changing. The energy is shifted. 
So to do this now is not cool. It's not flex. People think you're stupid. And that's great. And that's where we want it to be. And so when I'm pivoting, I'm pivot trying to figure out how I can still use my voice to be funny, snarky, and to like call out things if I need to. So that's kind of where I'm at. And then these, that's really, really important what you see with, with Alicia is that she figured something out, what went viral. She understood what went viral and she used all those things to go viral, especially your kid's diagnosis and everything else. She overshared all of their lives completely. Nevaeh and Deshaun were the most recent, and the moment they stepped foot into her house, when the gut, when the judge signed a paper, she filmed them, right? And now she thinks she's king shit. Now she thinks she's king shit of Piss Mountain, and I've heard that from many people that used to be connected with her. And she has a bad reputation now. So anybody who does connect with her at this point is just all clout. They they have been warned about who she is, and don't forget the the many terrible things that she has done. She has signed her kids onto contracts with a literal criminal she signed herself onto this contract with sun and sky entertainment a criminal who defrauded people 22 million dollars i think it was something like that went to prison um it was in a total jackass okay we have the things that we've discovered about alicia in the back end are so gross tying one of her children down because they ran away at night locking her fridges because her kids would be found in the fridge there are some things that i know that i can't even tell you and hopefully one day those children will grow up and tell you that's how bad some of the things that i know are that i can't even tell you them because there's so, some of them are so almost so unbelievable and it's only going to be up to those kids if they want to tell those stories to tell those when they get older and so i won't i won't even expose that's how bad it is like i'll talk about james and the artwork thing and uh, the, th the those things a lot of people even say that those are a little bit a step too far right i disagree but they would so it should tell you something that the things that i do know if they are true and i do believe them to be true i won't even tell you them and it's going to come out someday. The truth generally comes to light, especially when it comes to people on the internet. A hundred percent. It always comes out. And we're here for it. And so thank you for being here for that. So everybody take a deep breath. Do not forget to pick up your extra wallet. Look at this sweet, sexy pink wallet. That's so sweet. Like, anyway, thank you again for being here. Did I say take a deep breath? Should we do another one? Let's do another one. You are amazing, incredible, and valuable. Thank you for being here for these conversations. These are really important. And now I've, like, I think I know enough about Doherty Dozen that I can have, I can speak with some degree of education on them because I, I've seen enough. And I haven't even seen 10% of their content. Just seeing what people have shown me, what I found, what others have found, and, it, and I painted a picture which I think is complete and accurate. And that's crazy. Shouldn't be able to paint a picture of someone's family based on 15 second videos, but you can with her. And that's crazy, but you're not crazy. Beautiful. You need to be here. Don't forget it. Maybe call someone in your life. You haven't called in a while and just say, Hey, what's up? You're awesome. Maybe that's what you need to do. Don't fly flare American airlines either. And don't watch this bullshit. And I will see you tomorrow.